Hello and welcome. In this video we will talk about the definition of a harmonic function and the definition of a harmonic conjugate of a function. And then we will also make some relations between an analytic function and a harmonic function and how we can go between them with the help of some theorems. And after that we will do an example so you can test your knowledge. So let's get going. The first definition states that a real value function which simply is a function which have real numbers as output, is harmonic if the following is true. First off, the function needs to have continuous second order partial derivatives. And the second thing is that the function needs to fulfill this equation right here, which is called the Laplace equation. So let's uncover some relations between analytic functions and harmonic functions. For starters, if a function f, which is equal to the function u plus i times the function v, is analytic, then we know that the function u and the function v are harmonic functions. So this theorem simply tells us how analytic functions can lead to harmonic functions. But in this next theorem we will go the other way around. It states that if a function u is a harmonic function, then there exists a function v such that the function f is analytic. And it's good to know that this function v here is often referred to as the harmonic conjugate of a function u. And the strict definition for the harmonic conjugate is that the harmonic conjugate to a function u is a function v such that the function f is differentiable. And as you can remember, for f to be differentiable, it simply needs to fulfill the Cauchy-Riemann equations and it needs to have continuous first order partial derivatives. So let's continue with the example. And in this example, I would like us to show that the function u, which is equal to x squared minus y squared, is a harmonic function. And then we have to find a harmonic conjugate v to this function, such that the function f is analytic. So the first step in showing that the function u is indeed a harmonic function is to determine the second order partial derivatives. And in this case here we get that the second order partial derivative of u with respect to x is equal to 2, while the second order partial derivative of u with respect to y is equal to minus 2. And from this we can see that the function u have continuous second order partial derivatives and that the function satisfy the Laplace equation. And therefore the function u satisfy all the necessary conditions for a harmonic function. Okay, so the next step is to find a harmonic conjugate function v. And we can do that from the definition. So here we can see that we need to create this function v such that the function f is differentiable. And therefore the function v is a harmonic conjugate to the function u if and only if the partial derivatives of u and v are continuous and that the Cauchy-Riemann equations are satisfied. And from these equations we get that the part derivative of v with respect to y uh, should be equal to the part derivative of u with respect to x. And now we can use that we know how the function u looks like. So the part derivative of u with respect to x is simply 2x. And by now integrating both sides with respect to y, we get that the function v is equal to 2xy plus some random function which depends on x. And now we can use the next relation in the Cauchy-Riemann equations to determine this random function. So from the fact that the negative of the derivative of v with respect to x should be equal to the derivative of u with respect to y, we get that minus 2y minus the derivative of this random function should be equal to minus 2y. And this can only be true if this random function's derivative is equal to zero, which means that the random function itself must be a constant. And therefore we can draw the conclusion that the function v is equal to 2xy plus some constant. And that means that we have an infinite amount of functions that can be a harmonic conjugate function to a function u. But just to make everything a little bit more simple, we can let this constant be equal to zero for the time being. And now, since we know that the function v is a harmonic conjugate to the function u, we get that the function f, which is equal to x squared minus y squared plus y times 2xy, is analytic. 
And now we just have to rewrite this function as a function depending on c. And we can do that in two different ways. First off, if you are lucky, you can recognize that this function here is actually only the square of x plus i times y, which is simply the square of c. Or we can once again use the trick with analytic continuation. So we observe a function f on the real value axis. And then we have that x is equal to c and y is equal to 0. And if we use insert this into the function, we get that the function f is equal to the square of c. And this is a really useful trick for more complicated functions. So just remember that when you're using analytic continuations, most of the time it is enough just to let x be equal to c and set y equal to 0. Thanks for watching.